Hello there and welcome to my office. This is where I spend my days writing away and it's also where I store some of my flashy lighty projects. For instance the small suitcase in front of us has got a bunch of old defunct vacuum tubes. Uh, underneath the, the tubes are tricolored LEDs and the whole thing responds to sound in a very nice way. Uh, or if we come over here, we have the Victorian Audio Spectrum Analyzer. And on top of that, we have my entry for a cunning chronograph competition. Uh, and then the big unit here, this is uh, the one I'm working on at the minute. This is my prognostication engine. Uh, and it's a bit of a beast. There's an awful lot going on. Uh, the big vacuum tubes on the top are lit up with about 140 tricolored LEDs. The furnace in the box on the top has got 64 LEDs. Uh, the main front panel there has got 116 tricolored LEDs plus uh, obviously a load of switches and knobs. The knobs are on motorized potentiometers so if un someone unauthorized tries to make an adjustment they will return to their original position. There are also six uh, antique analog meters that need to be controlled using pulse width modulation. Um, all in all, quite a lot going on there. It's going to be connected to the internet, uh, so it can monitor the current weather conditions. So probably using Wi-Fi, it's going to have proximity detection. Uh, and in the fullness of time, I'm thinking facial recognition and artificial intelligence, so it knows who's playing with it. Um, so, a lot to control, as you can understand. Here's another view of the prognostication engine from the right hand side. Uh, you can see sticking out of the right of the upper cabinet there's an inverted uh, brass cone. And that's part of the main power up sequence to start the beast up. You hold a flame underneath that cone, a thermal sensor inside the cabinet detects it. After a few seconds a pop sound will come out and the furnace will catch fire. Uh, since we're powering it with the furnace that explains the antique fire extinguisher on the side. Uh, once the furnace is caught we then use this antique leather foot pump. It's about 100 years old from an old dentist office. So you'll pump that furiously with your foot until the furnace really gets roaring. Uh, and then you'll throw the knife switch, the master knife switch. And if you're lucky, the engine will start to power up. And if you're not, you'll have to do the whole thing all over again. Um, so, as I said before, there's a lot going on here. Uh, and we need something to control all of this. And at the moment, my existing solution involves lots of Arduinos and they're not really cutting the mustard if the truth be told. So here's a view from the back of the prognostication engine. Uh, in the upper cabinet currently we have two Arduino Megas. In the lower cabinet we have a third Arduino Mega. Uh, one of the upper Arduino Megas is controlling the 140 LEDs in the vacuum tubes. Uh, the other one is controlling the 64 LEDs in the furnace and the one at the bottom currently all it's doing is controlling the 116 LEDs on the front panel. With the simple patterns I'm using at the minute I'm really not stressing them out or using them to the maximum ability. But in the future I'm going to be doing much more sophisticated effects, fades from colour to colour, uh, adding in all of the other features we talked about before. And the bottom line is that these processors aren't going to be able to cut the mustard. Uh, yet another problem is the fact that we've got multiple processors. And I was thinking of adding a couple more. Uh, but the problem there is that they all have to communicate with each other. So that everyone knows where we are in the state of play. Are we powering the machine up? Are we powering the machine down? Are we trying to reflect some aspect of life? Like the fact that this tornado is about to come through. Uh, in which case we want everyone to be in harmony and all reflecting the same characteristics as it were. So I've been looking around for a better processing solution 
and I think I found it in the form of the Shield Buddy TC375 and we'll be looking at that in just a moment. Okay, so as I was saying I've been looking for a suitable processor to drive the prognostication engine and I just took delivery of this little beauty from Hitex. It's the Shield Buddy TC375. Uh, the big processor there is the Infineon Oryx TC375 uh, and this is an incredible beast. It's got the same uh, footprint as an Arduino Mega uh, but where the Arduino Mega is an 8-bit processor uh, running at 16 megahertz uh, this is three cores each 32 bits uh, and each running at 300 megahertz so the amount of computing power in this is eye-wateringly, mind-bottlingly powerful and the best thing for me personally, because I'm a hardware guy rather than a software guy, is that uh, I can program it through the Arduino IDE, although they do have a full Eclipse environment as well. Uh, and the programming model to me is really very clever. Because when you're programming a normal Arduino, by default you have a setup and loop function. Um, and when you uh, if you just took an existing sketch and compiled it, it would automatically default to core zero for both of those. Or you can say setup zero and loop zero, and you can say setup one, loop one, setup two, loop two, uh, and they will be compiled automatically to the relevant process cores. And then any functions that those functions call will automatically again be compiled to the correct process cores. Uh, the cores can communicate via shared memory. Uh, or via procedure calls, or via software interrupts. Um, so all in all, this is just an incredible beast. One processor to rule them all. So this is what I'm going to be using on the prognostication engine.